Good evening. Right now, Metro police are desperately searching for the person or people responsible for killing a man and a woman. I got a down the street. Breaking news now. A triple shooting leaves two dead. Never expect for somebody to tell you your loved one was, was murdered. This Labor Day will mark 42 years that have haunted the St. Cloud family. 30 years. 30 years this family has waited for answers. A couple months go by, three, four, five, six, and you, you really start to struggle with the idea that the case might not get solved and uh, that somebody might get away with murder. It's very unfortunate that we have any cold cases at all, and certainly unfortunate that we have as many as we do. And that's why the Ryan's work and the work of Project Cold Case is so important. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Ryan Backman, founder and executive director of Project Cold Case. And with me today is Lorena Inclan. Hey, everybody. Good to see you again. Yeah, our favorite action news reporter and Thank board you. member. Uh, how you? How's the holidays? Good. You know, I did have to work Christmas and New Year's I Day. I saw you on there. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, life of a TV journalist. I, I did get some time uh, with the family, so that was nice. Well, that's good. How that's about you? good. Yeah, I was good. We yeah. uh, stayed home. We didn't travel. Uh, had yeah. some family travel into town okay. to hang out with us, uh, so it was good. Got a little break and yeah. and uh, now recharged and <laughs> ready good. to start the new year. And we so. mentioned earlier, like more hands on deck is good. At the yeah, house. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. With two little ones running around, we had yeah. uh, some grandparents in town, some cousins. We had a good. a good uh, good group. And now the hard thing is transitioning back into work and school, right. daycare. Like the kids right. are like. No, no, no. We get to just play all day with our family. <laughs> and we're like, uh, nope, vacation's not, over. Yeah, not anymore. Back to school. So. Exactly. No, it, it was really good. Um, you know, we we uh, just got to relax a little good. bit, which with Never kids is... <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's few and far between. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, and I'm sorry you had to work, but we definitely, we had to have yeah. somebody tell us what was going on. And you know uh, what? I, I worked the morning show on Christmas Day uh, with my co-anchor on the weekends, Courtney Cole. So we had a really good time. And Corey Sima, we all work on the weekends. Yeah. So we know each other really well. We had a really good time. Uh, Christmas Day. So hopefully, if you tuned in on Christmas Day, yeah. it was all smiles and laughs. That's right. And it was nice. <laughs> no, uh, nobody was upset. No, <laughs> thank, thankfully, to thankfully. Be there. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for for coming in here and thank you for, for having me. Yeah, gosh, going in on Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Yeah. I guess you didn't go out and watch the ball drop or anything. Did well. You? <laughs> oh. I did because you know what I was off New Year's Eve uh -huh. so my husband and I we went to the Jacksonville Symphony oh, that's right yeah. yeah and then they had sort of like a little after party after uh, the symphony and it was nice and I didn't have to go into work until 2.30 the next day oh, 2.30 okay. in the afternoon okay. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I got to sleep in a little bit not yeah. the the, not the weekend uh, anchor job where you have to be up at like 4 in no, the morning no no oh no yeah I probably wouldn't have been as brave to go out until <laughs> midnight no well good deal um yeah. Uh, today we're going to talk yeah. about uh, Kelly Chappelle, Chappelle case, yes. and um, you know this was a case that we um, you came in. We did the interview here in our office upstairs uh, with Kelly's dad, uh, Bernard Chappelle, mm -hmm. uh, last February. Right, and um, uh, <clears throat> she was mm -hmm. you know. We'll, we'll watch your segment yeah. first, but basically she was a 23-year-old young woman that mm -hmm. had uh, recently moved down here to Jacksonville. From New York. From New York. Yeah. Uh, had met a guy mm -hmm. and started dating, and um, she ended up murdered in his apartment. Mm -hmm. Along with him. he was also murdered as well. It was a so. double murder. In, yeah. in the morning hours. Yeah, like, yeah, in the daytime. Not, right, in the daytime. Not overnight, but in the daytime. Yeah. Like early, like late after, late morning. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, somebody came by in the early afternoon mm -hmm. to, to like go to the house and found them right. deceased. Right. Um, so let's watch your, your segment in the interview that you did, and then we'll talk some more about that case. A local father's pushing for justice 12 years after his daughter was killed in a double murder. When it didn't have to happen... That's where the hurt comes. In a new Project Cold Case, Action News Jacks investigator Lorena Inkland talked to the lead JSO detective on the case about how the community can help solve this case and bring the family justice. It's an indescribable pain 
that you, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. This year, it'll be 12 years since that indescribable pain began for Bernard Chappelle. His 23-year-old daughter, Kelly, was shot to death, and to this day, he doesn't know why. There's not a day that good, does not go by where I don't think about her. Kelly had moved to Jacksonville from New York a few months before her murder. Within months of moving here, she met someone, a man named David Matos. On September 8, 2007, Kelly and David were found shot to death in an apartment at the Palisades off of University Boulevard. Bernard tells me he heard about the deadly shooting right here on University Boulevard while watching the news, but it did not occur to him that his daughter may be involved until he got a phone call from one of her co-workers. Both of them were, were shot in different areas of the apartment. JSO cold case detective Glenn Workentine says it did not look like the suspect or suspects forced their way in. The investigation revealed Matos had been selling drugs in the apartment. One major challenge is that there were no eyewitnesses, but JSO says people in the community may hold the key to solving the case and they need your help. If they're blazing enough to go out there in the middle of the day, just walk in and kill two people like that. Who's to say they haven't done it again? Bernard often thinks about what could have become of his daughter. He says she would likely be working with animals and maybe even giving him grandkids. But one thing is for sure. It's been magnificent. Lorena Inclan, CBS 47, Action News Jax. If you know anything that can help police solve this or other unsolved murders, call Crime Stoppers at 866 845 TIPS. You can stay anonymous. To listen to the project. You know what, Ryan? We were just yeah. talking about the holidays, and which is, I think you posted about this recently, about how difficult that time of year. It, you know, it's still fresh in people's minds. People are. Yeah. This is the first full work, work week, um, so a lot of families are are coming out of a difficult holiday season. Yeah, absolutely. That was a, a big focus for us, mm -hmm. kind of as the end of the year and the holidays, mm -hmm. um, that you know. You can't escape it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we think about it all the time anyway when we've lost somebody. But but during mm -hmm. those moments where you're surrounded by family and there's somebody mm -hmm. missing or you're having dinner and there's an empty chair, right. Right. Um, those things are, are, are very impactful and can really kind of loom heavy over you while you're supposed to be in a happy time, right. you know, celebrating. It could trigger... Uh sort of a, a dark time, right? Yeah, yeah, Even absolutely. if you thought that you were okay. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. That, that's one of those triggers, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. You can you can be going about your life like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like you've never experienced this, and then the holidays come around, and it's mm -hmm. a, a constant reminder. And, you know, I know uh, Mr. Chappelle, you know, we were talking about it a little bit, like his, you know, a lot of it was edited out for time's right. sake, but I mean, he was so compelling in talking mm -hmm. about his feelings and his emotions. Uh. You know, we, we hear mm -hmm. women talk about mm -hmm. the emotion of losing somebody and we see them get emotional and that's okay because right. they're women and it's okay for men too, you know, and right. we... we Absolutely. We just don't see it as often, you know. We, we don't. don't. We don't have the 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 men participate in these uh, interviews as often, and and Mr. Chappelle right. unapologetically is, yeah. has shows girl. exactly mm -hmm. the yeah. the raw emotion mm -hmm. um, that that impacted him and and continues to impact him. That interview you sat in on it. It was impactful. Like the the way that he described his daughter and what he felt when he learned what happened it, it was every i was hanging on to every word yeah because he was so just compelling with, with what he was saying and just you could really feel for him even if you've never experienced this and i hope you never experienced yeah, this right in in your life um but you you really put yourself in, in his shoes so um where we're currently working to there there's an issue with our podcast up on our website on actionnewsjacks.com so we're working to get those back up yeah. but the podcast has a, a lot more a of lot his, more. and yeah. I would encourage once we mm -hmm. get that, mm -hmm. we'll come back and comment on this post, mm -hmm. and and we'll share it on on our site as well. But right. those podcasts were so compelling because yes. they mm -hmm. they were edited 
uh, to create an entire story, right. but they were not edited for right. time. They right. weren't limited in any amount of time. It was basically we put the entire thing from beginning to end on on a timeline. No no cuts for time like right. how it is on TV. So it's the full unedited interview with like an intro and a and a what we call a tag in the business or an outro. Right. Um, to to let you know where where else you can find yeah, information. Yeah. The, the edited was editing was limited to. The intro, the uh, detective, the, mm-hmm. interview with the detective, right. an interview with the family. Correct. And, and That's the why the outro. podcast, I'm so proud of the podcast mm-hmm. because yeah. you, you can get so much more information on it. We give you sort of an introduction of the story on TV. And then if you're interested to find out more, yeah. definitely check out that podcast. Follow up with the podcast. So um, hopefully we can get that back online. But, yeah, yeah. As soon as you, you said you, you, you're talking to the station and mm-hmm. then you switched formats or something. Yes. And we, yeah. Now they're... Technology. <laughs> right. <and laughs> I'm glad that I found out today as I was trying to look for Kelly's podcast so we'll, we'll try to get that back up yeah yeah, yeah. Well, but in the meantime this is a good way to you know refresh this is, the case he was uh, Mr. Chappelle you know I mean he, he was so engaging mm-hmm. but you're right like the the empathy you couldn't help but feel f- for him put yourself in his shoes he talked about um, how he had seen the report about a murder mm-hmm. at the hotel or yes. at the apartment on the complex news. on the news had no idea that it was his, his daughter until you know. a co-worker of hers called him <clears throat> yeah yeah. yeah, and it was as you saw the detective say it was in broad daylight, um, and, and it was two people who were killed and in mis- different parts in of different the apartment. parts of the apartment. Right. And Mr. Chappelle believes that it was one of those situations where the perpetrators didn't want any witnesses. Right. So he believes his daughter was caught up in some sort of dispute, yeah. um, and and the, and he the, she could have been a witness to something. Right. The other victim uh, had been selling drugs mm-hmm. out of the apartment. Right. Um, that was. You know, was talked about in the story. Mm-hmm. The detectives talked about that. Um, Kelly and David was the other victim. Mm-hmm. Uh, had only known each other for like a month. Right. You know, they had they met. Um, Kelly had moved recently mm-hmm. from New York. <clears throat> she was out. She's yeah. young. She's excited because he was from New York. He's as well. from New York. So they they find something common, common to mm-hmm. talk about. Uh, she even told her dad, like, I met this guy. He's from New York. And her dad, you know, being dad, was yeah. like, I want to meet him. He never got the chance to meet him. Yeah. And uh, so there, they, I think they said in there that there was no forced entry, no mm-hmm. sign of forced entry into the apartment. So they do believe that whoever did it may very well have been invited in, whether right. it was for a drug deal or something other, else. They knew each other. Something happened. And mm-hmm. Kelly just happened to be there. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the thing that... Um, that law enforcement, you know, mm-hmm. talked about was that they just believe Kelly just happened to be there right. when whatever this ha- happened, this dispute right. happened, and she was caught somehow in the middle, whether right. it was um, just because she was there and they didn't want to leave a witness right. or whatever. There's and, no indication that she was involved in whatever was going on, but right. police believe that she may very well have been an innocent <clears throat> bystander in all of this. Yeah. So a 23-year-old woman. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean... You know, you, we have some pictures of her. Mm-hmm. We'll get Clint to pull up some mm-hmm. some pictures, including some some photos. Did you get the ones of when we were, did the interview? I put in another image. Um, but you know, beautiful, beautiful young, young woman. Yeah. You know, she um, there's a bunch of there's pictures of her when she's graduating, and you mm-hmm. know, it just um, you know not not that that stuff's important, but when you right. you know when you look at these pictures and you see the the life that was ahead. Right. You know, that could have been, yeah. it could have been. And that was one of the things that, uh, Mr. Chappelle talked about was he often thinks about what his daughter could have become. Right. And, you know, she would involve right. with something with animals, mm-hmm. but you know, or whatever it would have been, right. uh, he made it a point to say she would have been great. Yeah. At it, she would know? have been magnificent. She would have been magnificent. Yeah. And you brought up something, uh, else. There's the pictures, you know, when we were doing mm-hmm. the interview upstairs in the library, uh, when you were doing the interview, and I mean that even that picture of him with his, yeah. you know, hand on his mouth and he's looking to the side, it gives you me know, chills it, to yeah, it just yeah. he 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 thought through mm-hmm. every single answer, you know, mm-hmm. he, he could tell, and not it, it wasn't like he was trying to think of something to say. It's like I have spent every moment of the last twelve years, you know, at the time he's or thought about this every day, like yeah, thinking and, about this, and I want to express right. how do I want to express this. Correctly or appropriately, and I think it was his first TV interview, right? I believe I, so. I think it yeah. was. Yeah, um, uh, and it wasn't easy for him. I mean, he traveled here, <clears throat> if I remember correctly. He he lives near here. I think he's yeah. like in Orange Park or, oh, okay, or something okay. like yeah. that. But he um, he he doesn't do it. His uh, Kelly's stepmom used to do a lot of the interviews, but mm-hmm. I, I I believe that um, I don't believe they're married anymore. Oh, gotcha. And yeah. um, and he has always. 
struggled with Kelly's death and with her mm-hmm. murder. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we worked with the family a little bit at Compassionate Families when I was there prior to Project Cold Case. And, um, you know, he was just one of those uh, dads that would show up that mm-hmm. you knew that he, he needed somebody to lean on, that he was trying to really be strong for, for everybody yep. else. Yep. But you could just see the impact that, that it had on completely, him. And, completely, completely. Um, it was one of those interviews that, I mean, I, every interview that I do with family members impacts me in a certain way. Yeah. Um, but like you mentioned earlier, a lot of times we interview uh, moms, wives. Uh, it's not often that we interview yeah. dads. Right. And, and for whatever reason, maybe you can answer this more better because you're a man, but <laughs> it, you know, men don't express themselves the same yeah, way. Yeah. But I, to see him really pour his heart out, um, and, and you could just tell the 12 years that have gone by have taken a toll on him yeah. completely. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he, he admits it too. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's yep. like, this yep. d- has destroyed me. You know, mm-hmm. it has, mm-hmm. I have really struggled with this. And not he, knowing why. <clears throat> not knowing been, why. Yeah. yeah. And he, you know, I don't know what it is about us guys that we don't like to, to, to talk or share. Um, I've never had that problem. I've always yeah, been good. pretty open and, and willing to share. <laughs> um, but it, it, you forget until you see this man mm-hmm. sitting there that we just don't see that very mm-hmm. often mm-hmm. with these murders. And it's not that, that men aren't affected. We know that for every one of these victims, there's, you know, a dad, a husband, Absolutely. a brother, a son, you know, that there's some, somebody that's, that's been impacted. Um, but they aren't always the ones to come forward and, and, and speak about it right. publicly. It's okay to not be tough all the time. Right. It's totally fine. And, and I think, you know, Mr. Chappelle was a, mm-hmm. a great example of what we should all right. Absolutely. focus on. And that is, you know, our feelings are, are, are important and they're valuable. And to share those with the people watching and let mm-hmm. them know. Uh, how much this has impacted, you know, we've, we've talked about this before that people think, well, time heals all wounds, that you'll get over it, you know, you, you move on. Right. And, and here he is literally telling you 12 mm-hmm. years later, like, I have, I have thought about this every single day, all day long, and I struggle with it. And it's been a nightmare, like a nightmare you can't wake up from. Yeah. And time may make things, a, you know, maybe you, you, you learn to cope with it, but that doesn't mean you ever forget. No, yeah, absolutely. And that's a, that's really the best way to explain mm-hmm. it is learning to live with it, learning mm-hmm. to cope with it. Like, um, you know, people do go back to their jobs and they go back to their lives and they go back to having to live in a Life. world where now their loved one is gone and mm-hmm. has been taken violently. It's like you have to learn how to walk and talk yeah, again. Like yeah, it's, it, you have it, to start from the beginning. It's a very yeah. uh, tedious process um, and it doesn't mean that you're over it, you know, and, and, and sometimes just because somebody can smile, laugh, you know what I mean? Is there a certain life. guilt? Uh, sometimes, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. I can imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, excuse me, we talk to families all the time that are, you know, I don't feel like I should be able to enjoy a movie or laugh at a joke wow. um, because my loved one doesn't get that opportunity anymore. Wow. And so, yeah, you can you can imagine that like that's that's a struggle that that yeah. um, people don't really think it's about. It's such a burden. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here, Mr. Chappelle is you know uh, going about his day. Mm-hmm. You know, this was, was September eighth, two thousand seven. So he's just going about his life. Uh, on the news pops, you mm-hmm. know, up a, a murder at an apartment complex over off University mm-hmm. Boulevard here in, in Jacksonville. And I'm sure at that moment, he never thought that, you know, all these years right. later, um, he would be without his daughter. He would be without answers. The person responsible would it's still be out, out there, there right. you know, would not right. be held accountable. Um, how, how do you uh, heal and resolve all of those things when that, you know, when today... You know, January 7th, 2020, he doesn't have any more information than he had on September 8th, 2007. You know, I think the answer to that is you you can't heal. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, yeah, I, don't, I think you learn to live you with learn it. You to learn to live, live with it. To but healing, with it. It, it, you yeah. don't have the answers. You don't have the tools yet because you don't know what happened. Right. I mean, correct I, me if I'm wrong, but yeah. I, I, you know, how can you possibly move on if you... If it's just an open question mark, you know what I mean? And this has not been Well, answered. so this is a this is a, a great segue into, you know, we hear the word closure a lot. Yes. You know, and I've I've, to, I've been guilty of using that. It, well, too. we get so mm-hmm. wrapped up in yes. it and it has become 
the preferred word right. when we're talking about murder to and and unsolved cases that you know we want to bring closure to a family we want to bring closure you, you bring closure to the case, right? But I don't believe you're going to bring closure to a family. Absolutely you not. Know? And, and I've refrained from using that as yeah. much as I can because to, I almost feel like I'm offending somebody if I say that. Yeah. Because there's really no closure ever. You know, you can't just close a book on somebody who means so much to you. You know. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it really is a wound that that doesn't heal. I think that was, mm -hmm. you know, Mr. Chappelle's words, which I, I think he's watching with us today. Um, but it's, you know, it's, I've heard it described as, um, you know, you have broken heart and it's like scar tissue. You know what I mean? That, that, that scar is still there. It, you know, it just layers mm -hmm. on top so that, you know, it's, it's not as visible, right. but it is always there. And, you know, we, we always, you know, we don't use the word closure here in our office for multiple reasons. One being... I don't know if that's real or not. My dad's mm -hmm. case is still unsolved too, you know. You don't have um, closure. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the people that I talk to that have an, an arrest made and a conviction, I've asked a number of them, does it feel like closure? Do you feel like, you know, and the response is typically no. Like Absolutely. I, I, Absolutely. I didn't win an award when I got a conviction. You know what I mean? My loved one didn't come back. I didn't go back to being the person that I was before this murder happened. I didn't go back to the fun loving life that I had before this murder impacted my family. Right, right. Your um, love was not coming back. Yeah. It's, what you got was justice. You did get justice. And you hopefully got some answers. Hopefully. Yeah. Right. Um, but and I and I worry sometimes that, you know, we're we're setting expectations for, mm -hmm. for people that believe there is gonna be some kind of closure. You know, right. that there is gonna be some kind of um, finality mm -hmm. to this loss and and you go on the rest of your life having mm -hmm. endured you know that murder of your loved one and that loss mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think that you know we should be careful about about those words but yeah. even more so like we have to be understanding about people that are are, are still suffering Absolutely. years later Absolutely. like the, the yeah. idea that they should be um, healed or over it or you know that's not up, not up to us to decide no it certainly isn't I mean yeah. grief is obviously something that is mm -hmm. you know um, individual right you know I, I tell people like this like, like um, you know Carl Harms my friend mm -hmm. of mine yep. he's been on uh, Facebook live with us he's a advocate at the state attorney's office here and he lost his dad um, in a, know, drunk driving, in a, a drunk uh, driving crash. crash and and uh, his his dad and my dad were the same age when they were killed mm -hmm. or right around then they were a couple years you know apart in their deaths and Carl and I got really really close you know became really really good friends and we would always say like like our loss is still not the same like I had a different relationship with my dad than he had with his dad mm -hmm. some you know mm -hmm. so even when it is a scenario where you think like oh you you guys right. experience the exact same thing well we didn't. Everybody's, you know, experience, everybody's is experience is different. And we can't paint um, it with a broad brush. Like, no, we you, just have to be um, empathetic, you know, and just if that person is still hurting, that that's that's their reaction to it. We can't expect them to just move on like, okay, because I, I hear sometimes people say, why don't you just, you know, they tell families, why don't you just move on? Yeah. That is so callous, it is. you know. I mean, it's if they they obviously are somebody that hasn't lost somebody, Correct. 100%. you know, and, and certainly haven't lost somebody right. violently, you know, and had Absolutely. them taken from you Absolutely. with, you know, with with not, um, you know, a twenty three year old. I mean, come yeah. on, Kelly's twenty three yeah. years old. Like she, there was no one that should have thought that she wasn't going to live a very long life. Absolutely, you know, and yeah. and to have that. Um, taken from her and her family for no good reason for for, for no reason at, at all. all um you know no grandkids which is you mm -hmm. know something that uh mr chappelle mentioned in the interview yeah. that yeah. that you know what does he think about he mm -hmm. thinks about the grandkids that she could Absolutely. have given him that Absolutely. he didn't didn't the get. legacy she could have had and just you know carrying uh their family on and it's just so unnatural every single time that i interview a parent who lost a child that's the difference between you oh, know yeah, the other way yeah, around yeah. it's because it's not supposed to happen yeah ever I, like you know that's one of the things i've always said is like i you know i was supposed to bury my dad mm -hmm. just not the way i did right, you right, know right, right. but 
But that switch with a parent burying a child, it, it is unnatural. And, and you know, mm-hmm. and we can speak about this outside of the realm of, of violence and mm-hmm. murder. Any child loss, whether right. it's, uh, you know, for health reasons or, or accidental or anything like that. Like that trauma, to think that that trauma would ever go away, you know, right. okay. um, you know, it just shows never, 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 a never, complete never. lack yeah. of understanding, Absolutely. you know, and, and sometimes, and this is, I think kind of to your point, is it willful to not be understanding, you know, is, is it, is are you creating mm-hmm. a, a, a wall so that you don't have to deal with that. You know what I mean? So you don't, you but know. it could be a defense mechanism. Yeah. Is yeah. it a defense mechanism or are you really just that callous? Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's different for it's, each yeah, person. For each person. You know? Yeah. Because I have seen, and of course, you know, once you get into the rabbit hole of social media and you start reading comments and stuff like oh, that, gosh. there are some people out there who really are just like, you know, the old saying, if you have nothing nice to say, just don't say it at all. Right. Especially like why, why would anybody want to leave any, you know, hurtful comments on, on a case like this. You yeah. know, I'm not, not that anybody has in this case, no, but I've no, seen it in but other, we have. We've, in other I, yeah. I, I remember, mm-hmm. you know, I've told a lot of families a lot of times to, to just mm-hmm. try as hard as you can to not read right. the comments. And, Absolutely. you know, and it's, it's sad, though, that we have to do that. Well, yeah. because there are people that are caring mm-hmm. in those comments. And yeah, I think absolutely. that's what sucks you in is, mm-hmm. is somebody says something compassionate. Mm-hmm. And right. you go, wow, it's really nice to know that someone I don't even know right. Cares. Took the time to say, Took the time to say something nice and yeah. yeah, and support me. Mm-hmm. And then you scroll a few down, and then somebody says something that mm-hmm. it, that is, um, and you know, sometimes it's not intentional. But if you know, people watching when we do these lives and when you do your stories, we don't sensationalize these cases. Mm-hmm. You know, we we talk no. a, about a pod, true crime podcast mm-hmm. being so popular right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but we have seen such a negative impact of those on the families because because a lot mm-hmm. of times those podcasters are just um, they don't have family contact they don't have investigator contact they and have do they latch on to the most uh, sensational, sort of sensational or part heinous, of it or heinous part of it heinous part of it and then it's the part that they replay well, they, over and over and it's that and they and they assume. So they they Mm-mm. dive into a case, you know, and they say, um, well, maybe drugs were involved. Maybe this was a sexual assault. This what seems good like, does that do anybody? And it doesn't mm-hmm. help anybody, and it's particularly not helpful to a family that is already exactly. Well, you mm-hmm. certainly don't want to muddy the waters and mm-hmm. start creating scenarios that have nothing to do with the investigation. But you know, you're dealing with families that they're mind and their brain is trying to make something logical out of Mm -hmm. a situation Mm -hmm. that doesn't have any logic you know why was kelly murdered right it it doesn't matter what the answer is she should have never been murdered exactly Exactly. you know but your brain you're trying to figure out this cause and effect and and why something happened and you start to create a scenario in your head you know Mm -hmm. what i mean Mm -hmm. And, and um, and these are and that, these are real people. This is not a movie. This right, isn't, right. you know, a, a TV show. No, this these are real people's lives. Absolutely. And and sometimes, like you said, sometimes these podcasts just take it a little bit too they, far. And I think you know the idea. A lot of people want to um, want to help solve mm-hmm. a murder. And there's know? interest. And there is interest. There's a lot of interest, it's, which is good. And and it but, is good. Yeah. We call them desktop detectives. You know because mm-hmm. they they don't have all the information. Mm-hmm. But they watch a lot of TV. <laughs> you know, they watch a lot of investigation right. discovery. So they feel like they are, you know, prepared like they know, and they yes, know how to yes. investigate a case. And I think it's important, and you know this from your mm-hmm. seat, and I know this from my seat, that there's a lot of things in an investigation that are not public. A- absolutely. For, for good reason. For good reason. Maybe and the killer is the only one who knows that particular part of evidence. Why would they show their hand? Yeah, they, they can't. Mm-hmm. You could right. jeopardize the prosecution. But what that does is it leaves open, you know, a, a place for people to make assumptions and mm-hmm. families, uh, right. you know, desktop detectives, conspiracy uh, theories, conspiracy start running theories. Amok. yeah, absolutely, and that can be dangerous. If you can imagine, you've lost your your daughter, your loved one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been twelve years, and somebody comments something mm-hmm. in the thread uh, mm-hmm. along the lines of, you know, um, well, she was involved in drugs or she, you know, this isn't Kelly specifically, but we see these families say, mm-hmm. well, my loved one had addiction issues. Mm-hmm. Um, 
uh, had had a record, right. right? Now all of a sudden, it's like the, they deserved it because right. they made a poor choice, or because they I were see that time and time again. Yeah. And it's like the fact of the matter is that there is a killer out right. there, right? Who shot people in cold blood and is living their life. Right. And that is what we have to focus on, yeah. not yeah. you know whether somebody deserved it or not. I mean, right. come on, right. like we, that's yeah. not the it's, point. You it's, know, somebody can actually kill somebody in cold blood and then not be held accountable for right. it. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. There are people. There are thousands. I mean, just in Jacksonville just in alone, Jacksonville. Right. that it's very possible that one of the killers for one case could be the killer for another case and another yeah. and another. You know, you mentioned that earlier and uh, I, I wrote it down here. I typed out a uh, detective working team mm-hmm. for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. His quote in your, your story was, if they're brazen enough to go out there middle of the day and kill two people like that, who's to say they haven't done it again? Right. And you know, very, he, they very well could have done it again, time and time again, because and like, if you get away, with, away it, with it for yeah. 12 years, <laughs> why, why, why not do it again? Right. Why, if, why if, not? In the mind of somebody who could do that. Right. Um, so that is, is the focus here. That's what really should, should be the, the main concern for everyone watching, not just the family, but the people in the community, especially the people who live around that apartment complex who may have heard the gunshots go off. Right. Because I mean, it's very possible. I mean, this was in the middle of the day. They, they were this is an apartment complex it's not a, a rural area right 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 so yeah. people heard the gunshots it, during the day somebody yeah. saw this person apparently there were no witnesses but yeah. i have to believe that somebody saw somebody there leaving. were no witnesses that yeah. came forward no witnesses that came forward which <laughs> and is i think the that's key. the point yeah right. is that you know we put a lot of pressure on um, the sheriff's office mm-hmm. not just here but everywhere that they have to um, that they, they've got to protect us, that they've mm-hmm. got to um, take care of, of these crimes, and that that's their sole responsibility. But as a uh, society, society as and as neighbors. a member in the yeah. community, um, we, we have to take a step forward, too. We mm-hmm. have to help law enforcement. We have to come forward. We have to participate. And I think you know that's important for... Uh, regular citizens it's mm-hmm. important for organizations like project cold case the media mm-hmm. you know um, we have to help law absolutely. enforcement be their eyes and ears when they aren't there at the scene absolutely and i'm not trying to scare anybody but the thing is if we don't get involved if we, if we see something and we don't say anything who's to say that that person can't come back and maybe do it to your family right right i mean or somebody you know a well, friend of yours and, like and, you know and that's always been my right. go-to is like uh, you know the person that killed my dad could live next door to your child's bus stop right you know Absolutely. like that's a horrifying thought or Absolutely. be behind you know your spouse at line at the bank or the grocery store that's why it's um, everybody's problem that, it's that, not just yeah. a, a Chappelle fa- family problem or any of the families that we've covered it's not just their problem it's right. all of our problem and if we don't get involved this will just continue yeah. and like I said thousands of unsolved cases and counting and growing in Jacksonville yeah right so, now we're in, a, just having in Jacksonville. A, a specifically tough time mm-hmm. with uh, the murder rate going up um, mm-hmm. You know, lack of you know participation from the community and it's commitment a is, a, is a huge reason mm-hmm. why some of these cases are not being cleared. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we all have to get involved. You, you see the Crime Stoppers number there, eight six six eight four five tips. Mm-hmm. If it's the Kelly Chappelle case, uh, mm-hmm. if it's any case that you have information on, you can call that number. You can remain anonymous. We do understand that. That maybe if you know these people that were involved, you could be in fear uh, mm-hmm. of them finding out. Uh, you you can remain anonymous. You will remain anonymous if you call that number. Um, mm-hmm. Could we put Kelly's picture back up? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I want people to see her again. Uh, this could have been your sister, your daughter, your niece, your friend, yeah. your coworker. Right. She left behind a lot of coworkers who loved her, who called Mr. Chappelle and yeah. let her know, let him know that uh, his his daughter was gone. Look at her; yeah. she is a victim of murder, and her killer is still out there. Yeah, and I mean, I I can't help but think like, does she not look like every twenty three year uh, uh, old exactly. young woman? You know, that I mean, met that, in your life. I mean, is, you know, you I, would want to meet in your life. Absolutely. Um, you know, and look at her smile. I yeah. mean, her whole life ahead of her. She came to Jacksonville wanting to start a new life. I mean, she was excited. A whole new city came to Florida from New York um, and really was looking forward to her life here in Florida. Yeah. There was no reason why she should be gone. No. And I know I, I just saw uh, Mr. Chappelle commented about uh, 
the system is con- being concerned with uh, accusers' rights, you know, perpetrators' rights, and not the rights of the victim. And that's something that we probably okay. should yeah. dedicate an entire, yes. uh, you know, Facebook Live to. But the the short answer to that is that the Constitution of the United States protects the accused. And it protects the accused because back when the Constitution was written, Mm -hmm. there were innocent people that were being accused of things and convicted of things. And that's horrible too. I mean, to be accused of a crime that you did not commit. And some people have died for, you know, on death, gone to death row and been executed for crimes that they have not committed. So so there's a reason for that, but I can totally understand the frustration from families. When you see known, um, you know, suspects that mm-hmm. are, are guilty they're mm-hmm. caught Correct. on camera Correct. there's a tons of evidence there's witnesses right. what and they're using the constitution to protect themselves the constitution was there to protect the innocent the innocent yeah from being mm-hmm. accused you know mm-hmm. and and now you have the guilty mm-hmm. you know hiding behind that but the but the constitution is that you're you're innocent until proven guilty mm-hmm. and and that it is it is in place to protect though um, those that are accused to make sure they aren't wrongfully accused. Correct. But somewhere along the lines, victims have kind of been um, forgotten. Like they have, they have rights, but mm-hmm. um, but a victim's rights are not enforceable rights. It's not like you can call the police and say, you know, um, it's taking forever to get through the judicial process. <laughs> you know, right, go arrest right. the judge. You know what I mean? Like that's that's not. You know, right. those are the victim's rights that. That uh, you know, a victim has to really stay quiet and mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. stay behind the scenes and during a trial. Yeah, and and they're threatened with the you know you don't want to jeopardize the prosecution. Right. And, and of course, that's the last thing that I, you hear that, and it's your loved one's case, and of course you're gonna yeah. take that in, you know into consideration. You don't want to mess it up. These are all you know points that are. Um, you know, I think it's so important for people that haven't been affected by this mm-hmm. and impacted by this that, that they see a murder on the news and then mm-hmm. they see, you know, potentially an arrest on the news. And then they just, that's it. You know, they feel like it's over. People think it's over. Yeah. No, you know, no, no. And, by and, any, I mean, there's so many other steps. First appearance, then, you know, arraignment. Yeah. I, mean, I, I was at the state attorney's office yesterday. Um, and, and one of the things, you know, that the prosecutor was telling the family was that, you know, she said, I, I tell families anywhere from a year to three years, you know, mm-hmm. from the time that we get that arrest and arraignment to the time we go to trial. Um, and and that's they pretty much all fall in, in that category. Right. But occasionally there's ones that go more than three years. Oh, yeah. You know? And that can so, seem so slow and frustrating. And it's like watching paint dry. And yeah. it's like, oh, my gosh, can we just get this going? But that's the way our justice system is set up. It is. It is. It's not perfect, but uh, no. you know, and we we hear a lot that the the wheels of justice are are moving slowly. But as long mm-hmm. as they're moving in the right direction, you know, sometimes you have Absolutely. to recognize that and 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 know that that mm-hmm. you know you are. I mean, you know, Mr. Chappelle, there's a lot of families out here that are still waiting for that arrest mm-hmm. before those slow wheels of justice even right. start turning. Right. You know, exactly. so. Um, it, it can be difficult and frustrating for a lot of families, uh, and uh, we recognize that. And Lorena, I really appreciate like this. I, this was a great Facebook Live because we mm-hmm. were able to talk a lot about Kelly, but then tie in all of these um, yeah. things that are really can educate the public Absolutely. that has not been uh, affected or impacted by this stuff. And, and, and relevant with what we're going through right now in Jacksonville. I mean, we already had the first murder of the year recently yeah, yeah. and it was a young man young 18 yeah, year old yeah so it's it's unfortunately there's no end in sight right now and yeah. really we need we have a responsibility as citizens of of this country of 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 this city that is ours we really need to start getting a little bit more involved and even if you think it's the slightest little thing that may not help law enforcement let them decide yeah you don't play detective right, <laughs> in other words right like just call them up and they'll be very happy to hear from you i know that's disappointing to a lot of yeah. the people I that know. watch they i mean they, I and they think what we do at project cold case mm-hmm. is you know and us is, too with the media too yeah, like they, and, and, and i have to tell people i'm not law enforcement right and, um, and you can be an investigative yeah. reporter and dig things Correct. up and you Even have experience in right. that but that is not you There's know, a difference between an investigative journalist and a law enforcement right. detective. Right. Completely different. Yeah, so, they're, they're um, two different things. Yeah. And and no, we don't, you know, 
get our little magnifying glass mm-hmm. and put our little hat yeah. on and our pipe and go around and, and uh, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes these cases. Right. That's not right. our role. That's law enforcement's role. Right. You know, what we do is... And we is, can be beneficial with we what can. we're doing and, and we can help generate... And the reason why we do these stories at Action News Jacks is to generate tips, leads. So I, I hope and, and I pray that um, our, our work is doing that and uh, it really is up to you watching to help us do that. And there's a number right there that you can call uh, if this case sounds familiar, if you happen to live in that area or, or you recognized her yeah. and maybe saw her in the grocery store, maybe worked with her back in the day, a- anything that you may remember that could help police, just please, please call that number you see on your screen. You know, it's, it's so important what we do because, again, we have our defined mm-hmm. roles. They're not the investigation, Correct. but they are so important because, mm-hmm. you know, if it wasn't for the media, you know, I don't know the last time Kelly's case was out there on the news from 2007 until, and I think it did get some publicity over Mm -hmm. the years. Um, but you know, without the media, Mm -hmm. those people would not have seen it and potentially that tip, right. You know, reach somebody. And that's why we reshow it here on this Facebook live and on our website, because, you know, we can't control who has their TV on mm-hmm. when that segment aired Correct. back in Correct. February. But if and I we share it on my social media, like if in case you missed it, here it is. But even then, you know, yeah, that'll you, reach everybody. You, you can't. Yeah. But, you know, but that's where people really can help us and help Mr. Chappelle and the Chappelle family is share this. Share that story, share that segment, mm-hmm. you know, um, yes. watch it later. You know, we get some comments occasionally that people are like, oh, I'm so sorry I missed your Facebook right. Live earlier right, today. Right, right. You, it's mm-hmm. still on there. It's on it Facebook. Is, yeah, you right. know, you can watch it later. You, you, you know, we won't be name. able to interact. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. You can Google her name. Um, That's one of the things that I'm that I'm most proud of. Obviously, you know, I want to hopefully one day help generate a, a lead that, mm-hmm. that uh, a tip that leads to an arrest. But the fact that a lot of families that we talk to haven't had an updated story on their loved one and yeah. now they can Google their name and it comes up something a little bit more uh, updated, more recent. Yeah. That is awesome because somebody can go, if you want to learn more about Kelly Chappelle, Google her name and read the story on our website. Yeah. So. What did what you coined, Clint? What did you coin that? Internet silence, and, oh, and it really it, yeah. it it happened. We we discovered it mm-hmm. yes. with the Schwinder case that yes. you did with the the, the, did, the George Schwinder right? family. That when never they, even dawned on yeah, me. And yeah, they come with a file, you know, full mm-hmm. of newspaper clippings. All these yellowed newspaper clippings from what was that? 70, from the seventies, nineteen seventy or something. Yeah. yeah, and and they're like, this was one of the most high profile cases in in Jacksonville history. Um, yep. You know, middle of the day, really popular yeah. department store. Brinks, uh, yeah. Truck driver, mm-hmm. shootout, shootout in the middle of a, of a parking lot department store in the middle of the summer. I mean, it was if if that had happened today, it would be breaking news. You know, for, headline news yeah. for for days, for, maybe even weeks. And and it and it mm-hmm. was, but back then, mm-hmm. I don't even know how many news yeah. stations there were. One in Jacksonville, yeah. you know, television media and a newspaper, mm-hmm. and so they had all these newspaper. Uh, Clippings. clippings and if you google george schwinder's name nothing, nothing. Isn't internet that crazy? silence yes. i mean it was it, it, and they said like they said we don't understand why when we google our dad's name he doesn't come nothing up nothing shows up and mm-hmm. we're, we're going wow you know that's and right and right, until you right. did that story mm-hmm. and now if you google george schwinder's name that Correct. comes up and you can check out our previous facebook lives too. yeah that yeah carol bear yep mm-hmm. um you know, there's so many of these cases. You know, sometimes, you know, the internet was around in 2007 when mm-hmm. Kelly was, was murdered and all mm-hmm. the news mm-hmm. stations in town, you know, I'm sure covered it to some degree. Facebook was pretty new, maybe like two years in. Yeah, I, you know, mm-hmm. what probably wasn't used for this type right. of thing to share this right. stuff. Um, so we're, we're really at the cusp of being able to use, you know, now a case from 2017, 2016, they've probably seen a, quite a bit of, of media mm-hmm. and social media. Um, but when you're talking about cases from the 70s, 80s, 90s even, right. and early 2000s, not much um, out there. there's not much out there. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, your station, I don't know how far back you can mm-hmm. go back and, you know, find an old archives. story. Yeah. You know? and, and, it, and it becomes a little bit more difficult because they're on tapes. So then you have to go back and like search right. through, through the tape. And now the newer stuff is, is digital. So we can yeah, put, put can... in a keyword and it comes up. But anything that's older than a certain year, 
it's a lot more cumbersome to, yeah. to find. Uh, we, we still go through it, but it, it takes a lot more time. Well, it's just, it shows again, you know, some people don't necessarily see the, the value or the importance of, of showing these stories uh, on TV or on Facebook Live. But we do. And, we want you to know we do see the value. We see the yeah. value, and we're going to keep doing it and keep mm-hmm. putting the stories out there because, again, we can't control who's going to see this, but if, you know, you shared it, I shared it, Action News, you know, um, shares it, uh, people that are watching share it. Uh, people that weren't able to watch while we were doing it, you know, mm-hmm. live can mm-hmm. watch it later. Um, mm-hmm. That's how we're going to get that tip. Right. That's how Absolutely. we're going to find that person with information. Yeah. And um, that's why it's so important. Absolutely. And we thank you so much for helping us out. I know if you're watching, it's because you're interested and you do want to help. So thank you so much. And, yeah. and a special thank you to Mr. Chappelle, who's watching. And yes. I can't thank you enough for, for opening uh, your life up to us and really talking about the most difficult moment in your life. Yeah. So thank you for trusting us. Yeah, we really appreciate that. And we're still fighting for Kelly um, and for you, know, you, Mr. Chappelle, and your family. You know, know that we're always thinking about you and that you know, we're not going to stop sharing her story until that tip does come mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. and you get some kind of uh, some answers and some resolution. So um, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Lorena, thank again. You. This was a really mm-hmm. educational and yeah, <laughs> informative uh, live. And uh, it's always good to have, you know, your perspective from, from your seat as well. You. And um, so thanks for watching. Please, again, share this if you can. Um, watch us weekly. We'll be back next week with another Facebook Live keep up with our page, like our page, share those stories. Each one of those has a family attached to it, like Mr. Chappelle, that's that's struggling and needs the, the public support and the mm-hmm. community's help mm-hmm. and, and help and resolve their case. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a cold case, right, you know. Exactly. So we're going to show uh, remembrances from the family, from the victims that have been lost over the last week. Um, so they know that their loved ones know they're not forgotten as well. And we'll join you again next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you.